Good morning, everybody. Hope everyone's doing wonderfully well as we get started on this Thursday morning. This is The Game Plan. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at VerifiedInvesting.com. We got a lot to cover today, guys. We have things on the move. We just got some GDP data out as well as jobless claims. Let's get right to it. All right. Right into the action we go here with no delay. We're going to look at the headlines here. Number one, final GDP reading comes out at 3.4%. That was higher than expected. It expectations were 3.2%. So breaking this down, what does it mean? The economy in the fourth quarter. Now remember, this is a reading from the fourth quarter, the final quarter of last year. It was stronger than anticipated. So again, more strong economic data here that again can limit the potential for Fed rate cuts the rest of the year. Number two, jobless claims coming in at 210,000. Forecast was 212,000, so a little bit better than expected. Remember, jobless claims are people filing for unemployment. So again, the lower the number, actually the better. That tells us a strong economy. Previous week, last week was 212. So again, continues to be good economic news on the jobs front. Remember, the jobs data has just been amazing, whether it's unemployment rate being low or jobless claims being low as well, which again tells us people are not having to file for unemployment. Now, again, does that talk about the underbelly of the situation? Are people taking multiple part-time jobs? They might be, and again, that would not be in this scenario. So I've seen more and more of that, to be real with you guys, is that more and more people are having to find part-time jobs, which doesn't allow for them to file for unemployment, and they might be taking multiple part-time jobs. All right. Couple headlines here that just blew my mind. I gotta go over them with you guys. So number one, your car is watching you. This was an incredible report and honestly a little bit freaky. Reports emerging that everything you do in your car is recorded now, even your eyes on the screen or on uh, looking forward or down. How many of us get those, you know, you need to stop for a break of coffee type notification. That's looking at your eyes. The, the trigger here is this, and this is what's scary guys, is all that data, your speed, how fast you're stopping, your eyes, everything like that is now going to be recorded. It is recorded, it's then going to data companies which are then selling that data to insurance companies. So for those of us out there that are looking at our rates and saying, wait, I didn't have an accident. Why is my, my rate for insurance going up? Some people even being denied car insurance. And this is what's going on. So I think we need to see this acted upon. That's freaky, guys. Everything, more and more, our lives are being kind of you know, taken over and watched. You have your phone on you, that knows every place you go. Remember that, folks. And again, we're now seeing you're in your car, you think you might have your location off or you're not using GPS, doesn't matter. It is all tracked. All right, next up, low income, not going to fast food restaurants as much as prices have surged. This is another headline that for the underbelly of the economy is really scary, folks. So the headline numbers, jobs, unemployment, still good. But again, what we're seeing is is people making under $50,000 a year are now unable to go to fast food restaurants as much. This is not a good thing for McDonald's, Wednesday, when, uh, Wendy's, uh, Chipotle for the future of it. And what does it tell us, right? So think about this, guys. The, we, if you go to McDonald's now, a meal can cost as much as $20. Feeding a family of four for low income, $80 to $100 at McDonald's? Are you kidding me? But that's where we are now. This is what inflation has done. And the kicker here is this, is that this is during a period where the economy is strong. All right, think about that. What happens when we enter a recession? Now, you might say, well, what if we don't? Well, it's inevitable. At some point, we'll have a recession. It might be a year from now, might be five, 10 years from now. At some point, there will be a recession. People that are struggling already, and we just heard from Dollar Tree about two weeks ago saying that even low income are no longer able to shop at Dollar Tree. Things like that pique my interest. Also, Walmart. Walmart's saying more and more people making 100,000 plus are now shopping at Walmart. They're starting to move towards these cheaper goods because of inflation. These are signals that tell us there is something majorly wrong, even though the headline numbers on the economy, the stock market, all of these things, 
things are essentially looking great. The underbelly is rotting here. Remember that, guys. Lastly, rebalancing and window dressing comes to a close as quarter ends. I've talked about rebalancing here. Rebalancing is basically where companies had stocks or, or funds had stocks that were up massively for the quarter. They have to bring them back into that percentage allocation in their fund. Therefore, you see selling in stocks like NVIDIA, SMCI, Meta. I talked about this a little bit on the uh, close, the um, trading the close yesterday. And what we could see here is if you look at just the last couple days on NVIDIA, we've seen the sell-off, right? So a little bit of a sell-off, not a big sell-off. But again, this is funds that have, let's say you started the quarter with a 5% allocation in your fund or in your portfolio. On NVIDIA, it almost doubled. From the start of the year, NVIDIA is up something like 80 plus percent. So that 5% position is now, let's say, worth 9%, or it is 9% of your portfolio. A lot of funds have to bring that percentage back down to more reasonable levels, then they sell. And that happens at the end of quarters. It actually works in the inverse for other stocks as well. Take a look, let's go to Apple. Take a look at Apple. Apple having a great pop yesterday. So Apple started the year around $195. It's trading around 170 and change. So funds that had, let's say, a 5% allocation in that is probably 4%. They have to bring it back to 5%. And again, that creates a little bit of buying into quarter end. So again, that's what we have going on here. That's why you've seen some weakness. Even though the stock market's been reasonably strong, we still see some weakness in some of these headline names that had massive gains for the quarter. All right, before we get into anything else, we've got to do our spin. Let's go to our spin. Remember that on the on here, whoever wins today, whoever this gets chosen today, wins the one-minute scalpel by Dr. B, his new course that is debuting within the next week. And again, this is incredible stuff, folks. It's actually blown my mind. I've traded for 25 years, and what Dr. B has here is literally a game changer when it comes to the one-minute chart and trading it unbelievably profitably amazing so let's do it right now right over here guys let's get this going let's see who wins today and then remember we'll be spinning the wheel just in a little bit as well and we'll see what the next winner is for tomorrow all right tomorrow the stock market is closed and here we are guys at stevie d9290 please reach out to lawton at verifiedinvesting.com that's lawton at verifiedinvesting.com but congratulations to stevie D at 9290, and again, reach out, and we'll get that rocking and rolling. That's a fantastic, that course, I think, is going to be a $300 course as well, so pretty darn cool. All right, going back into the charts here, let's get right back to it. I want to start with the dollar. The dollar is trying to break out here. Now, again, just a few days ago, we saw it peak above this level and then get rejected, but now we see it above again. Now, if you've been following everything I've taught, remember, a break above doesn't mean a breakout. A close above doesn't mean a breakout. You need to see confirmation. Literally, confirmation will change the way you view charts. I hope each and every one of you really learns it. I do my best to teach it in the game plan. Okay, so look at that chart here. If we zoom out, if the dollar really does break out, it's actually got some legs here. So one of the things to keep an eye on is we'll talk about if it breaks out, which means confirms, you have a little break above here. Your next major resistance is not until this level here. That is not good for the stock market. If the dollar increases in value, that again would not be good. It would also be probably a negative for gold in the near term. Now again, generally, if you ask me where gold is in six months, 12 months, 18 months from now, gold is honestly probably near $2,500 uh, per ounce. But in the near term, I wouldn't be opposed to it pulling back, and I've talked about that with you. And the way that could happen is if we see the dollar push up here. So if the dollar pushes up, and what would make the dollar push up? Well, if we see inflation continuing to rise, tomorrow we get the PCE data. That's inflation data at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. I'm going to do my best to be here for a short game plan at 9 a.m. so you guys get the insights and what that data means for next week. But again, let's watch to see if we break out here. And you can see right here, right, there's a little bit of a level right in here that we're up against now as well. If we get above this area, then you go up towards it's approximately 107.25 would be your upside on the US dollar. 
Let's talk next about the S&P. So the S&P pre-market today, a lot of sideways chop from yesterday. So yesterday we had that incredible kind of late day surge. This is a 10 minute chart. So this is the last 10, 20, 30, 40, um, 50 minutes of the day with this surge to the upside. And then from that point, the after hours action and the pre-markets action here. So it looks like we're basically flat on the S&P going into the open. Today should be a very, very light volume day because the market it's again have a holiday tomorrow. The stock market does. Crypto's always open, we know that. But the stock market will be very quiet. Now again, the biggest thing for me is that we have confirmed below this wedge pattern. So again, if we flip to the daily chart on the SPY or the S&P, you can see again, we confirmed here. We did get a bounce yesterday, but remember to negate confirmation, and I'll draw this out. Here's a trend line. Here we're bubbling up against it. Actually, let's do it in the reverse so it's to the downside, so it's like this. Here. We hit, we hit, we hit, we, go, we close below, we confirm to negate confirmation, you must close above and confirm above, right? So essentially what I say is what happens below must happen above. If you just close one day below, well, you can just close one day back above that line. If you confirm below, you must confirm back above that level. Very, very important. So that'll be something to watch. Now, again, if something confirms to the downside, it increases the probabilities that you have a breakdown in play, which is what it looks like it's telling us here, but it doesn't make it 100%. So that's why we we watch to see, do we confirm back above the line? In which case, okay, the market flips from probability strongly favoring downside to now back to a neutral to maybe upside bias. Again, we'll watch that next week as we come into the action. All right, a couple things to watch here. SMCI, one of our favorite ones to talk about in the investment world of semiconductors, has had an incredible run. We have seen it pull back a little bit here. I think pre-market it's down. One of the things I'm watching, guys, is are we in the process of making a head and shoulders pattern on SMCI? Now, again, I'm going to do my best to draw this out so that we can actually do it so you guys can keep an eye on the screen and I'll go over it. But let's use our head and shoulder tool here on TradingView. And let's do this right now. So if we look at this and we draw this up, we draw this down up here, right? And then there's your head. And then here is your right shoulder. We need to come down to the neckline. Okay, there it is. Now the key here on head and shoulders for educational purposes is that what you have now is you have a neckline. This is called the neckline, right? And again, it's basically the neck, right? So I have my shoulders, my head, this is my neckline. So that's what you have and that's where the name comes from. If you violate this on a daily closing basis and close below, it triggers. Okay, once it triggers, you can calculate out the likely target. How do you do that? You take this high, the highest point of the head, drop a plumb line down to there, and you take that distance and you replicate it here to the downside. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna do that on my chart. You guys can watch it here as we do it. So what we'll do is we'll take our price range and take the highest point, drop that plumb line down. It's about a $390 drop. So then what we do is whenever we break, whatever point, I mean, it could be here, it could be over here, it could not be over here, but ultimately from that point, you drop $390 down and it gives us our general target. That would be around a $500 handle on SMCI. Now remember, this is only contingent on if this rolls over and forms the full shoulder and it needs to crack that line. Like for all we know, you could see this go like this and then like this. And then obviously as soon as you take out the high of the head, it's no longer a head and shoulders anymore, right? So be aware of that. We have to know when it triggers. It only triggers when you break that neckline. But pretty cool stuff how as you learn TA, you can really start to get involved and understand potential targets. And remember, it's just a potential target. It's nothing in stone but it guides us. It guides us what to expect, meaning that it tells us the probabilities have now shifted towards this action. And then if something changes in the next few days afterwards, we can adjust our probabilities and things can change absolutely on a daily basis. All right, looking at this chart, guys, this is McDonald's. I wanted to bring this up because Again, we just talked about how low income is, is unable to now afford going out to even places like McDonald's uh, as much, which again is a very sad state of affairs for an economy that apparently is growing at 3.4% per GDP. Unemployment's what, 3.9%. I mean, this is, these are historically low levels in terms of a great economy. 
and to see that type of thing is not a good thing. And it makes me sad, it makes me worried about the future. There's a reason why I worry about the 100 year cycle for the Great Depression coming up later this decade. Things are seemingly pointing in that direction that there's going to be major trouble. All right, looking at McDonald's real quick, guys. Let's just take a quick gander here. The one thing I see here on the daily chart, this is a potential M pattern. That's a potential bearish pattern formation. Again, basically, if we look at this, you could almost say, oh, wow, is that the chart of Bitcoin in 2021? It went up. It came down and then it went up, made a higher high, just like Bitcoin, and then it rolled over. So again, seeing that data, I don't see like a chart perfect setup here for a short, but the bigger pattern certainly does indicate that potential. If we go to the monthly chart, it kind of shows us a whole view here. I mean, look at the run this thing has had, this incredible move. So this is your little M that we were just looking at right up here, and it certainly looks like we might be in store for something like that and then you get the A pattern and then another leg to the downside. And that would jive with a lot of the data that we just talked about earlier in the charts. All right, what about a trend line potential break point? Well, one of the things I would just say is just keep an eye on this. I mean, look at this trend line here. You wanna see a major break? Look at this. Now this pierce here was COVID, so that was absolute panic. The world was ending. That's why I'm kind of going right through it because all of my other levels align, right? So you look here, 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 and here, even though you pierce there, that is more of an outlier per chart analysis. So what you're looking for is you may get your M pattern like this, then your A off of that line, and then the breakdown. That would be a very plausible scenario for what the chart could do, all right? Um, overall, um, I'm just looking at GM. We were just bringing up how, how your cars are now watching you. By the way, I mean, you know, I'm all for, for more fuel efficient, but it does make you wonder about having a car with literally no technology in it other than a gas engine when you see stuff like that, folks. I will admit that. It did cross my mind of like, get rid of all these new age cars and go back to the old school. Heck, horse and buggy, what the heck, let's do it. <laughs> all right, in any case, this is your chart of GM. We look at this, but nice move up on GM. I will just note this, is you did have a little bit of a breakout above this level here. If we scan this right over, you can see we have gone above that level there. But I will say this, see this pivot point over here? That little dip area is gonna be big resistance. So even though GM doesn't look horrible here, it's not something I'm invested in, but I would say upside limited to about $48 a share. Once you get up to that level, you're going to have a lot of resistance. Okay, uh, other than that, I think I just wanna just mention um, the chart of Amazon. I haven't really covered Amazon very much with you guys, and considering it's a little slower day for big news moves in stocks, we can touch on this. Um, I do think that Amazon is basically, if we flip out here, this is where Amazon's going. So I do think eventually it gets to double top here. But again, the question I have, is this another scenario of that Bitcoin 2021 McDonald's chart where this M pattern repeats over and over again, where basically you have the high here, then you have this big dip, then you come back, and usually you make a little higher high which lures in all of the remaining bulls to think it's a breakout. And again, this is why confirmation is so important per the chart. But once you get that and you stop out a lot of the bears because you break the high, and that's what happens in psychology, you then get that move to the downside. So just something interesting to keep an eye on that. And again, something to watch there. Now, shorter term, if we just go back in the shorter term, you have a little negative divergence here developing on the RSI, but it certainly isn't that crazy, right? I mean, it's a little bit, but it's not to the extent where I would be shorting yet with that double top lurking so closely. But you pierce that double top, I would definitely be in intrigued on a short basis. All right, guys, I think that's enough for now. Let's go to the wheel. Let's do our spin here, our wheel of appreciation. Again, what do we have here on the wheel? We have Kitgo. We have uh, Trading View. These are the sponsors, NordVPN. We have another Trading View. And again, just scanning through, we have other things as well, like the Winning Trader Series, the One Minute Scalpel, um, Verified Investing Alerts, and more and more sponsors are reaching out to us to be on this wheel of appreciation where you guys get to win every single day. Remember, at the end, I'll tell you the question. And by the way, awesome answers yesterday. I appreciated you guys loving the RSI analysis and so many of those other things that I did. All right, let's spin away. Way. Whoa, there it is. It's so close to winning trader series right there. Uh, live day trading room, one month free. That's $400, guys. So that's what we have here. So again, um, 
I will uh, will will find out tomorrow in tomorrow's stream, and at the end of this, I'll let you know what question to answer underneath this video. Remember, you must be a follower of Verified Investing on YouTube or on Twitter to be in that, right? So if you're not following, but you comment and you win, you won't get the prize. It's very important to us to have you guys as followers. We appreciate that and your support. So thank you. All right, let's get right over here. Let's go right into Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, a little bit of a pop today again. Yesterday, we had a small move to the downside. And one of the things to just keep an eye on here is that we are coming up to the quarterly and the month, uh, the monthly close, right? So uh, the weekly close, the monthly close, and the quarterly close. This is going to be huge, guys. Can Bitcoin close above 69,200 on the weekly, the monthly, and the quarterly? And the reason why that's important, I've talked about this before, how the last few weeks you've closed below 69.2. It's almost like it's, there's someone trying to keep it down where they're pushing it below that level. But my question is, can they get it above on a close? If they do, honestly, kind of think you're going higher. Like that would be a bull signal on um, a closing basis. The reason why I'm choosing 69.2, 69,200, because that's the approximate high of 2021, the highest point in 2021. That was your all-time high back then before we recently broke it. So let's watch really closely come Sunday night. Where do we close on Bitcoin? Again, the only negative would be, so I, I want to really do my best to present to you guys the bull and the bear case, right? So the bull case, you get a quarterly, weekly, and monthly close above 62. I think you probably head to 80 at that point. The other side would be this trend line right here. If at some point, let's say we don't close above that level, if we start coming down and trading below this trend line, that would be the warning sign that we're probably going back to 50,000. So again, the question is, what does the data tell us? It's me not trying to say, oh, well, I think this or I feel this. Markets don't care. Crypto doesn't care. Bitcoin doesn't care. What does the chart tell us? And remember, all that does is it puts probability slightly in our favor of being correct, which is all we can ask when we're investing and trading. All right, a couple other charts I want guys to look at. INJ has been one of my favorites right now. I am intrigued by the INJ chart because of this trend line. Now, this chart is not a healthy chart right now, and I want to explain why. So INJ, injective, is the, is the one here. First of all, look at this trend line. Now, it is holding this trend line, so that's the one positive this has. But if you look at this, this had this amazing breakout where it went to like $54. And then within one week, it dropped from 54 all the way back to 35. While Bitcoin has fell all the way back to 60 and then is now north of 70 again, this has only had a small bounce. So again, that is concerning on a chart basis. Why hasn't this participated more? We've seen even Solana get bigger, a bigger bounce. We've seen Avalanche. Well, Avalanche has struggled too. But the kicker is this. If we, we've already hit this line so many times, if we hit it again, I do worry that you start to see a breakdown on this. Now, interestingly enough, if we look at charts, what do we see about potential targets? Well, let's look. One of the favorite things I love to do with you guys is look for parallels. If we take this high here and we stretch it right over here, right? So if we look at that, we virtually have a parallel line from that line here. And again, you guys can see that, right? From this low here, we take the highest point in basically, I think that was uh, 2023, to this high here, and it goes right here. And you, so you can see, again, this, this area here, you basically would think that this would make sense, where if it broke, that would be first target. So again, that could be the downside. That's around 25-ish dollars uh, uh, per coin uh, on injective there. All right, let's keep, our go keep on going here. I want to go over to gold. Gold continues to be, by the way, before I do gold, just note the ICP chart here. That's a topping tail yesterday. It's already playing out, but again, topping tails are great indicators of, of tops being put in right here. All right, gold real quick, guys. We have just a couple minutes left. Gold is pushing up again. So looks to me like gold doesn't even want to give us a chance of a pullback. It still wants to just go up, up, and away, which again, probably tells us something not only about inflation, but the underlying issues. I've talked about this even before. Remember when gold was trading at like $1,800, $1,900 an ounce? And on these streams, I was saying to you guys, the, the central banks are loading the boat on gold. Even though I'm a technical analysis guy, when I hear that China is buying more gold than they've ever bought before and that other central banks are following suit, to me, that's like, dude, these guys control everything. If they're buying gold, 
I need to be long gold. And so again, then you add the technicals, the inverse head and shoulders, the breakout, and again, it's gonna go up, up, and away in my, in my opinion. Doesn't mean it's not gonna have pullbacks, and I'd like a pullback, because I'd even like to buy more, but again, right now, gold performing very, very well. Uh, oil, real quick, guys. Oil's having a little bit of a push up, remember? Your upside is right now limited to 84 to $85. And ultimately, if we achieve that, I look for the downside. If we did confirm above this 85, then the probability shift to more of a bullish case. But right now, 84, 85 is probably your likely top on this chart. Lastly, natural gas, guys. And again, just quickly on that gas here, it did break below the wedge, but ask yourself, did it confirm? No, not yet. And look, it's trying to recapture that line. We'll see where this ends today. I think we have NAT gas inventories at 10.30 a.m. Oftentimes you get some price action. Uh, that's Eastern time, by the way. But nonetheless, little bit of a break, but no confirmation. And it's trying to get back. You confirm, you probably go to double bottom. If you can recapture, maybe we can get a breakout to the upside. And again, I do think NAT gas at some point does make a move up. It's been depleted or, or hammered down here quite a bit. All right, guys, I got to get to my trading floor uh, here, my live day trading room. Uh, keep an eye out. We're going to be launching a new website in the next few days. So just take a look at that, and I will kind of walk you through that new website. It is everything on that homepage I meticulously put together so that it is helpful. Like, so many websites have so many different things things. I tried to make it on one homepage for you guys. It's all free on the homepage. And then obviously my services, Dr. B and Ben, my head traders, we, we do the live trading room. We just do so much. We have Paul doing his crypto service. It's going to be incredible. But anyways, I'll give you guys more insights into that soon. Thank you as always. The question, let's not forget that. The question today below this video on Verified Investing YouTube or Twitter, let's do... Let's do one thing that you plan to do this weekend that's going to make you feel good, all right? So some, some feel-good stuff going into a holiday weekend here. I want you guys to remember, life is good. You guys rock. You guys support me, and I'm going to do my best to support you with knowledge and prizes. Thank you so much. Take care.